When you just start working with Looker Studio, it's normal to have questions how to connect your Google Sheets. Hey, my name is Gala. I'm Looker Studio expert and the founder of Gallery Reports. In this video, we will connect our Google Sheets table to our Looker Studio dashboard. Let's start. So we have sales data in Google Sheets. We already know that we have title in the first row. We sure that all numbers are understand, like Google Sheets understand as a numbers. I cannot say that about our transactions because you can see that they're from uh, a line to the left side as a text. So let's try to um, update it. Actually, it's really nice uh, that we see it from this data set because you can have this um, trouble quite often. So what we can do? Uh, if we remove dollar, it's already will be fine. So select the whole column and we just remove dollar sign from specific data range. And voila, our column became from uh, change left side alignment to the right side. It means that now it is a number. You can see it. It's fine. So this is date. Uh, this is text, text, and four columns with numbers. Uh, it's really important when you connect your Google Sheets to Looker Studio. Do not have, do not have uh, merge sales. To have, um, if you have column with numbers, the whole column, a part of header, should be number. If you have even one row with a text, Looker Studio will understand this column as a text, and will have some errors here. Same uh, with date. If you have date column, be sure that all columns are date. You can check it like here as well. Uh, so go to filter and uh, just scroll. Okay, here on the dates and nothing more. Perfect. So our table is ready to connect to Looker Studio. We're here in Looker Studio and we go to resources, manage edit data sources. We can go here. Or simply click to add data. We have a list of data sources and in our case we need Google Sheets. It will be on the first line uh, and here we have a lot of Google Sheets owned by me, shared with me, start, uh, even you can use URL. We will see all items. Uh, my document called YouTube tutorial, I will select this. Here we have a lot of tabs uh, I want to connect tab that calls sales data. Let's find it here, sales data. And when you move your mouse, you can see this icon. If you click it, a uh, document will open. It's really nice to check if you connect correct document to your Looker Studio. Which options do we have more? We can use first row as a header. I recommend you to use this. Um, and this, I said, it's important to have header on the first row without merge sales. It will be our title. Uh, dum, bum, bum. Include hidden and filtered cells. I do include it, but it will depend on your case. Also, we can include specific range. For example, uh, here I don't have extra cells, but for example, we can have several columns. And here we have some text comments that we don't want import to Looker Studio. That is why we can use specific date range from A to G columns and type it here as an example. A, G, G. And click add. Basically, that is it. Super easy. But of course, there are some tricks. <laughs> uh, add to report. What is interesting, I can tell you about Google Sheets data. Let's add chart, let's add simple table to see our data. Okay, we have it. I don't want to see record count. We can see transaction revenue, um, order quantity, order amount. Um, 
external customer type, for example, and uh, resize fit to data. So we have some simple column where we can see different type of data. Quite uh, refund. Let's add summary row. No, we don't have refund, so we don't need order quantity and uh, item quantity. Yep, this is more relevant information. What we can see here, uh, by default, transaction revenue, it is a number. Even if we change here from numbers to dollars, here it will be number. So by default, uh, number columns, Luger student is sent as a number. What we can do with this? And this is a big difference between Google Analytics data, for example, and Google Sheets data. We can change, uh, we can change, and we can play around with uh, with some data types. Let's click to edit to see what we have. We have several columns, and here we have column type, column name, and default aggregation type and description if we need. We can change title of our data source. I want to make it shorter. Uh, we can channel, it is a text. I agree with this. So we can check in our first case uh, when our transaction revenue was, do you remember we removed the dollar signs here. Um, so now we have it as a number. If we didn't remove, uh, we have this as a text. Uh, why it is important? Because if transaction revenue is a number, we can do some calculations. If it is a text, we can not do any calculation with this field. It's important. So data type and aggregation type, super important for Google Sheets data. And for any kind of any type of data, actually. So item quantity, it is a number. And uh, default aggregation is sum, but we can change to average, count, count distinct, and uh, others. For some cases, it is important. And for Google Analytics data source, for example, we don't have a uh, possibility to change this aggregation method. But here we can. Uh, it is not correct, but just to know, let's change to average. But for item quantity should be some in most in like in 90% of cases it will be summary. Anyway, we're just testing. Month we have in a date format. Here we have options. We can change date to date time, year, months. For example, I want to change it to year months format. Uh, orders quantity, it is a number and sum. Refund amount, it is not a number because refund it is currency, so we change to euro, for example, and transaction revenue, it is a currency, so let's change it to euro as well. So we can change type of data and we can change aggregation method. Also by default we have record, record count metric, uh, we can... Um, Change you make this data source a little bit only in this report. Nice. Uh, agree. So it's it said if I use these data sources in different type kind of reports, uh, what I have changed here will apply to only for this exact this report. Uh, what else do we have here? We have uh, data credentials. Uh, this is me. Um, also, we have data freshness, and we can change default 15 minutes to every hour, every four hours, or every 12 hours. If you know that you have data updating like every hour, change it to every hour. You don't need to pull data every 15 minutes. Same about 4 and 12 hours. But we can stay with default as well because we don't have a lot of data. I think, you know, it is important when you have really large data set and a lot of calculations inside Looker Studio. I prefer to use uh, more rare updates that your dashboard will work faster. 
but we don't have a lot of data, so 15 minutes is fine. In community visualization, access is on. It's for community visualizations. Yeah, we can stay it on. Also, we can add fields and add parameters and filter by emails. I have separate videos about these features, so I, I'm not sure that you need. Uh, you, I recommend you just check these videos because they, are, they have more information about these features. Also, we can change names, for example, channels or customer type. You can say users, whatever. So you can change name of your fields. And when you're ready, you can click done. Let's see. Our column changes, transaction revenue changes to euro because we change it here on the data source level. Uh, item quantity, we changed, uh, we changed, let me see, we changed item quantity, default aggregation type to average. So when we add, let's remove item quantity and add it again. And now you see different numbers. It means because now it count average for each row. And here you can see that uh, default aggregation type it is average. One more moment about Google Sheets data. In Google Analytics, for example, you have date and uh, Looker Studio use this date field as a default by the, for date range. For Google Sheets, Looker Studio is not sure for 100%, so he tried to find, for example, in my in my data set, we have column month uh, and with date type, and Looker Studio understood it as a date. You can see calendar icon here. And it offers you this field as a date range dimension. But you can easily remove it to show data for the whole period of time. And you can add here. Let me see. Yeah, we changed date format to year months, and now you can see year month. When we change this, that for we had here year month by default we had date. You can see if. change to date. I think that is it about connecting Google Sheets to Looker Studio. As you see, it is super easy, but there are some tricks and some moments where you should put your attention. And of course, if you do it for the first time, you could have some questions and something could go goes wrong. It's fine. Just try. Test. Uh, check your data set. Check that all your data is correct. All your data pool to correct Looker Studio. You don't have errors nor sales data in your Google Sheets. And uh, check more of my videos. You will find a lot of tips and tricks about Looker Studio. If you want to learn Looker Studio, you can subscribe to my online course. You can find link below this video where we create um, marketing dashboard in Looker Studio from the scratch, step by step. And that is it. Subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and thanks for watching.